beautiful. Yeah, I, I, she, I'm impressed with her. Hey guys, NJ here looking at the uh, Jumper X73S today. Now, I was initially asked to, uh, well, whether I wanted to have a look at the Jumper um, X73, which is the non brushless version of this. And in fact, if you look at the picture here, um, this is actually a. They, haven't even, they actually haven't even bothered to redesign this silhouette here. This is the this is a picture of the the brushed version. Um, the brushless one does look very different, which is what we have here. Um, and I just turned it down because I had you know a couple of micro quads uh, to look at the QX90 and the QX95. As you guys probably know, um, I've had a lot of success with those. I think they're really great little quadcopters. The 95 is actually uh, I really enjoy flying that one. Good power, good performance for a brushed quadcopter. So I'm not that interested. In, in reviewing another one of those but when they said well okay how about the brushless version I thought why not let's see let's see what the differences will be um, so let's have a look at the quad in terms of what comes in the box um, well pretty much nothing you get the quadcopter you don't get any real kind of information whatsoever and um, all you're actually left with here is um, this website now I went on to this the uh, www.jumper.x YZ and I got nothing. Um, the page failed to load. So, to be honest with you, if you want information on this quadcopter, your best bet is to actually go to the Banggood page, um, and the product link for that is in the description. And you'll get far more information out of their product description page than you will from uh, the actual site recommended on the box. Not a great start, but there we go. So, the quadcopter itself, let me bring this into view. Um, it does come without the uh, the prop guard on there. I recommend you put the prop guard on. Um, one of the big reasons is you only get one set of props in the pack. Um, these these are kind of whoop style quad blades um, with kind of quite a heavy pitched root and then flattening off towards the end. Um, so you know you don't really want to damage them. So. Uh, my preference normally is not to bother with prop guards. I prefer to take take it outside and, and fly it around and, and you know, I just prefer having the, the weight saved than putting it on. But really, you've got little choice unless you want to go and, and buy a whole bunch of these. Um, it's very similar in design to the um, X73 brushed version. And in fact, um, very recently, the RC Addict, um, I'll give you a link to his channel. If you go over, he's just put up a video on the brushed version of this. and. Um, um, yeah, I share a lot of, of, of similar thoughts to him on this brushless version, so if you want to check that version out, you can see. In terms of what have they actually redesigned between the two, well, what we've got here is a PCB um, as the actual uh, body or the frame, if you were, the main frame of the quadcopter itself, and they have printed on here the ESCs and the flight controller, you know, the whole thing is just printed onto one. Now I know that can be a little bit of a scary thing for some people, you think, well if you crack it, that's it, game over, and yeah, you've absolutely got that as an argument. But it is, you know, it is. it feels pretty stiff to me, and you've got to remember, it is a question of inertia. This thing is pretty light, and when they're light, they don't carry much inertia. If they don't carry much inertia, when they crash into objects, they're not, you know, the, the shock impact really isn't going to do much damage. And you know, I've yet to see one of these uh, actually broken from doing that. Um, and it really comes down to, you know, what purpose is this for? Is it for indoor flying? Is it for a little bit of sort of zero wind outdoor flying? Uh, and and you know, maybe it's more important that you think about where it is you want to fly. Um, you know, if you're going to fly in concrete areas, then obviously you're going to take a little more risk. Um, but given its weight, I don't think um, it's going to be that big of an issue to have the uh, to have the mainframe as the the PCB and it does uh, as PCB rather as opposed to carbon and obviously that's a weight saving thing. Um, the brushless motors that are on here, the way they've arranged this, um, it's a standard outrunner design brushless like many of the ones we're used to but the shaft is instead of being on this side at the top it's pushed through to the other side and um, the props are mounted on top that way. Um, now when you get this out of the box it does come with this section on it um, which has a little kind of kickstand at the bottom um, and you can see if I bring this up a little closer you can see where that mounts to those screws. Now the reason I've taken mine off is um, 
I decided I wanted to try uh, and see the difference using a, a higher C rated battery and the higher C rated 1S battery as this is designed for 1S only that I decided to use um, was just too thick um, you can see here the screw uh, wouldn't have well it just wouldn't have made it back so what I instead decided to do um, was use some rubber bands and just screw the top half in uh, like so which works fine it at least allowed me to test this higher C rated battery more on that a bit later um, but with this on um, the reason they've got that kickstand at the bottom um, if I line that up you can see the idea is that it protects the, uh, the these bell housings because obviously they, they're exposed um, now with a thicker battery it's fine it will still do that um, and it does sit just off the ground but to be honest with you I mean I've, I've got a little bit of flight footage to show you um, and you know it did touch the concrete a few times on the bottom when it was starting up I've got no real wear and tear on here they're, they're absolutely fine and you know for what it is and the price I'm, I'm really not that bothered I'd rather just lose this use rubber bands save a little bit of weight and then be able to switch between these higher C rated batteries and the more standard uh, sized one like let's have a look I've got one here you can see this is a, a thinner battery and this is designed for uh, to fit in that perfectly so this is a 600 milliamp I think 600 milliamp uh, 3.7 uh, 25c um, you could use a like a 400 milliamp and go lighter still um, that might yield better results um, so there's something to think of there but this is how I've decided to do it now um, this is a, just a standard, I think it's a 520 line CMOS camera, uh, you know, however much they rush to get this new technology out and like these micro brushless is, is obviously going to be the next wave of things. Um, however much this technology moves forward, the, the cameras don't, you know, it seems like the only company that seems to be pushing camera technology at the minute is uh, Runcam and, you know, power to them. I hope they can continue to do so because they're putting out some great uh, cameras for quadcopters at the minute. Um, so Runcam, if you're listening, can you can you please start developing some micros because um, some some micro cameras that compete with these because you know this kind of thing that we see common on here is such a weak spot. It really is. I mean, when it comes to flying out, flying under iridescent light, you know, like indoor lighting, these cameras do okay. And you'll see some footage of me just hovering in front in front of my kitchen here. Um, uh, which will give you an idea of how it looks and then some footage of me flying out in the evening um, and under you know outdoor lighting it does pretty well too under floodlit lighting but in the day they, they just suck and kind of take away from the enjoyment um, so yeah that's nothing different it is separated in this housing here this kind of top pod um, from the backboard um, which you can see here and you'll probably notice I've covered this thing in rubber bands um, and the reason I've done that is because after the, you know the first flight when it flipped over and I was just trying to get the rates right on this it just sort of flipped over and landed on its roof and this whole top pod just came away now it's it's kind of secured on this this plastic hinge here you can see there's a little plastic hinge but if I pull upwards you'll see that it's not actually retained now I'm not entirely sure why they decided to do it like that I presume in a crash that any kind of shock wave that goes through the quad then causes this to pop off and absorb the damage rather than uh, crack anything so that's probably their line of thinking but if they're going to do that what they wanted to do was kind of close off the way that this bolt is retained by the top pod because all that happens is it, the top pod comes off and this bolt here ends up um, coming out like that and then you've got one of these little plastic bolts here and that's gone and if you're outside you won't see it again and there's no spares in the box I mean like I said there's pretty much nothing in the box other than a, a, a USB adapter um, because the adapter cable let me put that back on the, it needs an adapter cable to go to uh, to USB off of that that little uh, Pico JST connector there so you know it's it's just not the greatest design in the world you know it works um, but I, I'm just not a fan of it so I'm already getting frustrated with this thing right there we go that's back in and of course when you do crash what ends up happening is you put strain on this connector here and you can see this is power you try and get that in focus power runs from up here and then plugs in down the bottom here and that that connector is stronger in where it's seated than the join up here the solder join at the top and that cable is frustratingly short 
um, what they should have done is made that cable a little bit longer, a little bit longer, so you've got some, you know, you've got some some give there. Um, so instead, what happens is, and what did happen when I crashed outside was that that connector just gave way and came off, um, and you immediately lose your video, and that was game over. I had to come back and resolder it. What I've now done, you can see here, is add some hot glue just to try and secure that. Um, so that's how that looks let me just pop this back on if I can there we go and you can see it kind of gives it a little bit of a, a back angle but these these cameras have such a crazy wide uh, FOV anyway um, it doesn't really matter whether these are straight upright or tilt back anyway in my opinion um, the other thing they have here you can see they've, they've got a um, dipole style just a standard whip antenna on top here um, for the 5.8 gigahertz and uh, video feed and you've got some dip switches here to select your frequencies and again they've decided here to use one of those little mini connectors um, let me try and get that in shot I'm going to focus there we go so you've got that that kind of mini connector there um, and it just rotates so freely um, that again I've had to add some hot glue to stop that rotating round into the props while in flight. Um, I can't see why they didn't just directly solder it. Again, it would have saved maybe a gram or maybe, you know, it saved some weight and it certainly doesn't mean that I then have to add weight with hot glue to stop this thing rotating round. Um, and that would have been more robust. Again, in a quick uh, test and a, a small crash, that just pops straight off. You know, the, the, just feeling like the whole thing kind of explodes whenever, you, whenever it so much as just gets anywhere close to the ground. So I've hot glued the top, I've hot glued the top of this connector and I've put rubber rubber bands around the actual board because again the band, this this board is just kind of press fitted in there and it just, you know, popped out again, you know, this whole thing just falls apart. Not winning any awards for, you know, great design at the minute. Um, in terms of the motor performance, so I suppose we should get onto the fact that this is brushless as opposed to brushed. Now. Indoors, it's, it's very cold here in the UK and at the minute my outdoor flight was close to zero degrees and this battery, I didn't preheat it, I just got, you know, because you should warm your packs up as much as possible before you fly them in, in very cold temperatures, it really does make a difference. Um, and it didn't, it performed okay, I would say on punch out, probably on par with something like the QX95, which is this chap here, you've seen my review on this, you know how much I love this quadcopter and how well it performs. So it wasn't as if this was going to deliver any kind of, you know, I, I was hoping for better power. When I was indoors and indoor testing, and I'll put a little, little bit of footage of me kind of doing mini punches, uh, punch outs in here, um, in the corner for you to see you'll see that it does actually punch out uh, and it's pretty strong. Um, so I think there is a performance increase um, over the brush quads because there obviously is a bit more of a weight increase with these. Um, we'll get onto the weight in a minute, I'll put it on the scales. Um, and I think what you'll notice more by going brushless down at this size is it's more about its ability to respond to fast motor changes in RPM. So when you're doing flips and rolls, for instance, that's when you really notice uh, how much, uh, or ha you definitely notice that it's more locked, that it's snapping to, um, to uh, out of a roll and hard stopping with much more precision and feeling more like the larger quadcopters that we're used to um, than say brush, brushed motors will. So that felt nice, like as far as the tune goes it tuned up well and it performs well but on 1S um, you know there isn't like this enormous jump in power over the brushed models. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm really mixed. I've mixed feelings about this. On the whole, I've, I've got to say, this particular model, it just feels like too much of it was rushed. They they should have thought more about the design. They should have put some, you know, better ideas into. You know, even just stopping this backboard here of the of the camera falling out. All it would have taken is a couple of plastic retaining lugs into the design, but they didn't. They've just taken the straight up design of the earlier model and tried to minimise design change and. I just think it's lazy. I think, you know, 
they, they, they really, there are some very simple things in here that could have made this a lot better. And in terms of tune, I will show you at the end of the video where I ended up with my Betaflight settings. I put Betaflight 3.1 on there and I ran these ESCs in one shot 125. These are not BL Heli S, these are just standard BL Heli. Uh, the flight controller itself is uh, basically a Naze 32, that's what you're flashing it with. Uh, if you're wondering what uh, controller is on there, so it's an F1. Like I said, the flight performance was was good and locked uh, in sort of some basic acro, so uh, I've no real complaints. I don't think this needed to be an F3 or above for what it is. So if we have a quick look at the QX95, we're coming in at 56 grams. Obviously, that has the heavier antenna. It has the uh, separate flight controller, receiver, LED on the back. Um, and frame and rubber grommets etc 56 grams for that one and I love the performance of that quadcopter this guy and I should probably chuck that in as well is coming in at 52 grams so you know it's four grams lighter I mean things like this uh, whip antenna aerial all those little bits and, and obviously having the PCB as the main frame structure all those things have helped reduce the weight where the um, you know the brushed uh, the brushless motors will pick will take the weight up a little bit they've they've obviously worked towards a a certain weight point so it's a little tricky for me to tell until the weather warms up um you know to actually see the, see the best fl flight performance out of this in terms of power um indoors in the warm it feels better than it does outdoors in the cold so it's a little tricky for me to tell i just think right now um the whole brushless thing is a little bit in its infancy on these micros i'm sure we're going to see a whole bunch more of them coming out at this you know very quickly you know how fast this stuff moves so you know for now i personally think you should wait hold on to your money and uh you know as soon as something better comes along it will be on the table and i'll be the first to let you know about it so there we are for now um i will see you guys in the next one